Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. This is the path A for setting up the items master data. Let us understand the item master. In SF Business One, you can manage all the items that you purchase, manufacture, sell, or even keep in inventory. Even the services can be also defined as items, but they will be only relevant for sales purpose. For an item that you enter, the data that is relevant for a particular area or the particular field in SAP Business One is in turn used for reference for purchasing, sales, production, warehouse management, and other accounting purposes. You use the Item Master data window to update, search, and maintain the item data. The Item Master data record is created for each product and is identified by a unique code. You would create an item master for a product at a level of universal product code or a catalog number. The item master data is at the heart of almost every process of SAP Business One. That means that it controls how the item acts in sales, purchasing, production, MRP, inventory and service modules. There are some few points that we need to understand. One important rule that applies to item master data is that if a master data record has been used in any of the documents such as marketing or accounting or inventory like AP invoice, AR invoice and so on, it cannot be deleted. But the question here is that a company may no longer use an item, they may no longer stock it or they may no longer purchase or sell it. So how you can do those items? There is an option in SAP Business One that you can mark those items as inactive. That means that it will no longer be available for use. It cannot be added to sales order, it will not be available for purchase order and any other thing. And later on when you archive the old data, all these items that are no longer needed can be deleted. Even these inactive items are not available and not shown in the system reports. Let us start with the item master data form itself. I have highlighted few areas. This is the general area and there are some information and the fields that I have highlighted here. You will understand them one by one. Let us start with the right hand these three checkbox. So designating an item as inventory item means that the item can be used in inventory transactions. Similarly marking an item for purchasing or sales will signify that the item can be bought or sold on marketing documents. If you mark an item as inventory only, you cannot buy or sell that item. Perhaps you have an item that you never purchase, instead you manufacture the item in house and then sell it. Such items would be marked for inventory and sales. Another example would be a service that you sell. In this case, the item would be marked only for sales and not for purchasing or inventory. Further going down, there can be examples like expenditures, like office supplies that you purchase for your business purposes. You might not choose to receive those in inventory because they are used directly after purchase. This item would be a purchase item but not maintained as an inventory item or stock item. Then going down on the left side of our screen, there is item type. SAP Business One has three item types. First is the item itself. Second is labor to use in service module to calculate the amount of time spent completing a task will refer to a labor. The third is travel that is used in service module to calculate the amount of the time the technician spends traveling. When you will press on this drop down then you can see all the three available item types. Then there is a foreign name description. You can enter the description of an item in foreign language. 
which can be available on the documents for business partners that use other languages. Let us start with general tab. On this tab, you define the additional general information for the items. I have again highlighted few information here such as manufacturer, shipment type, managing item, active inactive, phantom method and issue method. Let us start with manufacturer. Here you can mention in general tab a manufacturer for the item. Then shipment type, you can mention in general tab that the means of transport or the mode of transport that is used to perform the shipment. You can manage the item by three options. First is none, that will imply that no special management for this item is applicable. Second is serial number, which means serial numbers are assigned to the, the lots of the item or the incremental serial numbers are given. Third is batch, the item is managed by batches. Another important option here is phantom item. It defines the item as phantom. A phantom is an item type in bill of material that has an engineering or structure functional only. The phantom items do not represent a physical component or a sub -asset. Thus they are defined as non inventory items. Going down towards issue method, you have to select one of the following issue methods. It can be back flush or manual. Back flush will imply that after you have reported the completion of a parent item, the components are automatically issued to production order. This would be true when you are manufacturing PC sets and there are small items like nut and bolts which are needed in bulk. Going towards manual, the components are manually issued to the production order regardless of the issue of the product. In the previous slide, we have talked about how the items can be made active inactive when they are no longer in use. Active, it is the range that defines of dates to determine the validity of an item. In other words, you can define the validity period of an item. When you mark an item as inactive, it defines the range of the dates to determine the period of the item for which you are freezing it. Let us move towards our second tab that is purchasing data or purchasing tab. On this tab you enter purchase related information for an item. I have again highlighted few information here such as preferred supplier or vendor, catalog number, Purchasing and sales UM, packaging dimensions. Preferred vendor, you can assign a preferred vendor for the item or select a vendor from the list, from the lookup. Each time SAP Business One creates a recommendation, it enters the preferred vendor value automatically. Another important field is manufacturer catalog number. You can assign the catalog number of an item in default vendor's catalog. This is displayed on the purchasing and sales document. Before we go to purchasing UOM, let us understand what is UOM. UOM stands for unit of measure. To manage inventory items by different unit of measure applicable to your business, you need to define the individual unit of measure. We will understand unit of measure in more detail once we understand this video. These are the units which are used for an item when it will be purchased, sold or stocked. In simple words, the UM of an item is the unit in which the company measures, sells or purchasing an item. Here I have given two examples that the company buys sugar in bag. So here the bag is the UM for sugar as my item. And when you are buying pet bottles, you buy in cases. So the case will be your unit of measure for pet bottles. This is the purchasing UM and I have taken a screenshot and I have highlighted this screen. This is the purchasing tab 
and this arrow is indicating towards purchasing UM item per purchase unit. You can enter the purchasing UM name and the item quantity per purchase unit of measure, which has to be greater than zero. You can update the items per purchase UM field even if the document is entered in SAP Business One, which will not affect the order permitted or in stock quantity of the item. Let us understand by an example. You buy a case of soft drinks and there are six bottles. That is your item per purchase unit of measure. That is one case. In other words, when I buy a case, I have six units of soft drink bottles into it. If you buy six cases, you are actually buying 36 bottles. So in all the transaction case is the purchasing unit of measure and the number of item per purchase UM is six. Moving towards item per purchasing UM. This is the quantity per package where you can enter the package type you want to use for the specified purchasing UM. In addition, you can define the quantity of purchasing unit of measure per package. Now, if you are buying a pallet of soft drink, that means the case is your purchasing unit of measure and the pallet is your purchasing package type. Assuming that each pallet contains 10 cases, which means that 10 is the quantity per package and in total we are purchasing 60 bottles. In the next video, we will see the remaining tabs of the item master data.